Hi, everybody, and welcome to Out on Film Conversations. I'm Craig Hardesty, and I am um, beyond thrilled to have this special edition of our conversation series to talk to our winner of the screenplay competition that we um, have now done our second annual screenplay competition. And I am very pleased to introduce the winner of our narrative feature screenplay, Timothy Smith, who wrote a wonderful screenplay called Istanbul Crossing. So Tim, welcome to Out on Film and congratulations um, for winning our screenplay competition. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's an honor. So, you know, one of the things, Tim, I'm, I'm going to say when we were, you know, reading all of the screenplays and, uh, you know, deliberating on, uh, on winners and, and kind of what spoke to us, you know, one of the things that we look for is a new story, something we haven't seen before. And I just have to say, if you can tell us a little synopsis of Istanbul Crossing, because this is something that all of us reading is a story that we had not we have not seen before from our community. So tell us a little bit about the synopsis of Istanbul Crossing for people. Okay, um, it, it comes out of actually some real life experiences that I had. Um, for a couple of years, I was very active in helping Syrian refugees who were arriving in Greece. And when I finished writing something about them, uh, I realized I didn't really know how they got on the rafts in Turkey to cross to Greece. So I went to Turkey to uh, meet with Syrian refugees still in Istanbul and find out how the smuggling operation happened. Um, the basic story is that um, a young Syrian, young gay Syrian refugee has fled Syria uh, for his own safety. He had watched his cousin with whom he was having a small sexual affair with uh, be executed by the Islamic State for being homosexual. Uh, he goes to Istanbul and he um, survives by smuggling other refugees to Greece and basically has a pretty simple operation going, but in that he's he gets a reputation for being very resourceful and, uh, and honest, uh, an honest broker with people. So because of that, he's approached by both the CIA and the Islamic State uh, to, who want him to manage smuggling of high-profile individuals who are sort of on the run from basically the Turkish government in some cases, or in other cases they're terrorists and want to come back to back to Turkey. And so he ta- he he's obligated really because they they both have things to, hold, to hang over his head and threaten him with that he has to help he has to basically coordinate two different operations, one for the Islamic State and one for the American CIA. And in the process of that, he meets two men with whom he he falls in love with both of them. And he has to choose one of them ultimately because, and they each offer a very different future to him. So it's a, it's an interesting, it's a literary thriller in a sense. And there's a fair amount of romance in one hand, but it's also (laughs) quite quite dangerous for him at the same time so he he and he's sort of a young guy who hasn't had much experience he's 24 years old uh he's yeah. diddled with his cousin a little bit but in terms of knowing that he's a gay man and what that really means he learns that in the course of this story as well and look i am one i love literary spy thrillers i love spy thrillers in movies and to have a a, a a gay man be the the hero, the the, the protagonist and, and the central figure is it's just one. It's just refreshing, and one I'm just thrilled that we get to have one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, most of my work has a uh, gay protagonist, or, or certainly very important gay characters. Not not all of it. Some some stories just that do, doesn't lend it to that. Right. But most of my work has a, a gay main character. And when, so like walk us through some of your process as you know, you did the, the research for this. How does your own kind of creative and writing process for, for people out there who, who are curious, you know, how you, you know, you do the research and, and how does the story evolve for you? Well, a lot of the work, the stories that I have, or even, the, even this one, um, 
are really stem from some real life experiences that I've had. I mean, the fact that I worked for a couple of years working with refugees on the ground in Greece, uh, intermittently I was there, but I was there over two years and, and played a fairly significant role. I, I got very familiar with the Syrian refugees and wanted to write a story about them. And, and, and I, I take from my own life, I've had an amazing, amazing life and experiences. I, uh, before I became a full-time writer, when I was 46 years old, um, I had about a 25 year career in international work that took me all over the world. And I just, um, and as a gay man, I saw the world through a gay man's eyes in a lot of countries. And I've drawn on those experiences to uh, make them come to life and, and to give them some, you know, some credibility to, to, to them without them being just sort of flat, stereotypical kind of characters. I, I can give some depth to them and I understand the cultural context in which they're working because I've been there. And for, I think, it, a broader audience, too, it kind of, it lets us know that there, there is a whole world out there, and we know that, but to, to really kind of humanize it to the degree that you do, it is it's something that I, you know, kind of spoke to us on the jury. Uh, you know, there is a refugee crisis. We don't often hear in any kind of outlet about the, the queer refugees who right. have a different, I mean, th th they have a different kind of plight um, in all of this and to bring their stories in the ways that they have to deal with, you know, coming out, being open, not being open, uh, you know, it, it, it brings, you know, a, a certain portion of the world to an audience that I don't know that we always get to see. No, and I think that in Istanbul Crossing, it's particularly poignant to do it because being a, a gay man in an Arab society is really very difficult. Mm -hmm. And yes, there were gay refugees, but I wouldn't necessarily know that um, because everything was so hidden. Um, and I have read about them and I've known that they were there, but um, when they got off the rafts, um, I. I wasn't thinking gay or straight that, you know, it was just right. people helping. But um, I, I have, as I did the research for Istanbul crossing, um, I became quite aware of the really, the numbers of people who were gay and, and really suffered because of that as well, because even, you know, even if everybody on a raft were, they all were in trouble or they all, were desperate but if somebody was gay they were even more and more trouble right more desperate they weren't going to get any help so it was you know i i do try to put a human face to my stories and 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 my stories are gay so um that's you, you picked up on that and that's right, right. That, i did try to human i do try to humanize it it's not just stories about a lot of people who have desperate plights but try to really make, make it people be able to empathize, empathize right. with them. And we have a little romance going on. Yeah, right. And yeah. everybody likes a little romance in the midst of a smuggling operation. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, tell us about, you know, so one of the things that I, I will just say as, as we, um, as a film festival and, a, you know, and, and what we do is promote, you, you know, queer voices. Um, we started this screenplay competition because we wanted to be able to, you know, provide an avenue for people on the front end of, of writing to get scripts recognized, voices recognized in the hopes that it spurs, you know, the ability to get this made. Tell us a little bit about the journey of trying to, what it's going to be like to try to get this film made. Well, the filmmaking business in America and around the world will, it's very, very difficult and very competitive to break into. I mean, I, I've been working at it for 20 years and um, I have written uh, probably about eight screenplays now and I have four published novels and a fifth one, Istanbul Crossing, as an unpublished novel waiting to be published. And I have won or placed in easily 150 uh, writing competitions. But to get somebody to actually go for a screenplay is very tough. It's right. the most expensive way we've ever created to tell a story. So people have to feel very confident that there's a market for it. And I right. 
think that there is increasingly a market for gay material on the screen um, that's serious, not co comedy or sitcom sort of thing right. like, like we used to see. But, um, you know, I, I just enter competitions and I try to get literary. Um, they call them not literary agents. That's for that's for writing. They're literary managers for screenplays. And I just am constantly working that part of the business as well as marketing myself. Right. So, and and just so as people who are watching uh, and, and and thinking like, why do we do these kind of competitions? Why is it important that we be able to provide avenues like this, the, the competitions, the recognition? Because what does that help to do? For you as a writer and artist, kind of slugging through this kind of really difficult terrain to get something made. Well, it gives me, you know, credits on my resume in a sense. It gets me through some of those doors that would be permanently shut to me otherwise. I mean, when I, when my first novel was published, it was published by a very small publisher. It didn't matter. It was a real traditional publisher and it got, got me a place at the table um, that I didn't have before in terms of being able to then go on and try to get another book published and another book published. Right. And, um, all these things are very, very, very important uh, to, to, to the, to the artist, to the writer. Um, I happen to um, have founded about 20 years ago, something called the Smith Prize for political theater. Um, and it's for basically political theater in, in America. Right. Because I love the theater and um, that prize is, um uh, uh, has chosen in a couple or three cases playwrights that one went on to win the Pulitzer Prize in drama. Okay. And, wow. And um, when she won that prize, when she won the the Smith Prize, she was ready to quit writing because she had she had run out of money. You know, poor, a poor playwright. Right. Right. And it made a big difference to her that she could just continue. Even and, you know the monetary thing also helps, but. Um, even w when the prizes aren't aren't huge, they they're they're significant in terms of that you can see I I I've oh, won the grand prize and you know right. out on film kind of thing, so it, it it's important to have be able to have the credits. That's and and I'm glad that you said that because that's one of the things that like we had always thought about as you know we've been doing this for a very long time and kind of wonders like I I know that the financing is difficult, getting things made is difficult. Uh, and and we were like talking to filmmakers like, hey, you've been in our festival. We're waiting for something else from you. <laughs> um, and what you know, and I think it's important. I think for people to realize that as a community to support our artists, um, it's up to us to support our artists to get our own stories made, um, so that we can see ourselves on screen in novels, you know, in literature. I think um, I, I always kind of maintain that I think that art saves us in so many ways. As a young gay man, I found it through literature um, and found a whole world of gay yep. people through literature, yep. you know, as a 17 year old. Right, um, I agree. And it, it provides that lifeline. And so, you know, for, for us in particular, who are not born into our community, we have to find it. Um, and art is so often the way that we get there. Well, I think that you're in a very good place to help situate you know people like me at this point because I've won your competition, but others in the past have as well, and will continue to. That you have a a, a, a gay film festival, um, so you've got gay filmmakers there, and yeah. you know people who are producers and directors and actors who are all have all been part of it. And I think that that that's still important. I think that they're in this in the straight world in a sense. Uh, they're a little bit more hesitant to. Uh, put together a film that really is very much gay focused or gay oriented right. and um, but y it's important for people who are in your position to also let them know about the about the very screenplays you've come across maybe not even the winning ones necessarily right. all the time it may be one or two that you thought oh this is a really great great screenplay and you meet somebody and you think that screenplay I read would be a great match for this yeah. person um, those are the kind of links that you know hopefully serendipitously happen uh, yeah. occasionally. Um, I'll, I'll tell you in one of my marketing strategies with Istanbul Crossing was I began to go out and look for gay Arab films because yeah. 
you know, it's pretty rare. Yes. And first of all, it, it, if if people, I don't know if people know about IMDb Pro, mm -hmm. but that's the internet internet music database, movie database. And um, when it comes to Arab actors or filmmakers, there's almost no information for, to contact. Right. They're in hiding, even though their films have been great. Um, they stay in hiding, even on IMDb. And um, that's a, it's, a tough to, it's tough to find people who ha have tried to make that, from their perspective, what they want to do, which is put gay stories on the screen. Right. And there's some really fantastic Arab gay films out there. I mean, just fantastic that I have found. And I just couldn't believe the, the, the multidimensional qualities that they had. I, I I think that one thing too that always speaks to me, and I've been you know I've been doing this a, a long time now, and one of the things that excites me, especially recently, and I'll, I'll say recently within like the five past five to seven years, um, is just the sheer breadth of topics and stories that all of you are telling. Um, you know, it seemed like for so long, we were always focused on coming out stories, uh, which, right. you know, there's always going to be a company, we're always going to be coming out and a coming of age, um, you know, but to see, you, you know, that there's just this whole breadth of storytelling that seems to me to kind of exploded in the yes. past like five to seven years of we, we can get, you know, a gay refugee smuggler we can we can get things about couples we can get you, you know things just about our, our shorts um winner leo lets it rain is about a trans man with adhd um, and it's just telling all of these different stories that i find in our space and our community to be very very exciting i, I agree and, and when i first started writing i had friends say don't don't get pegged as a gay writer because you'll be pigeonholed and you'll never really be successful. And everybody thought of, of, of gay novels as basically being about sex and about right. sex, and about sex. And there wasn't, you know, it wasn't a sense that things could be a, 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 something else. Right. Um, I mean, I'm reading a novel now, which is quite amazing to me. I'll, I'll mention it if that's okay. It's sure, uh, sure. Called, called through the wrong end of the telescope by uh, Rabi Al Alamadine. And its story is uh, the story of a trans Lebanese, uh, yeah, trans Lebanese doctor who goes to Greece to work with the refugees. I mean, it's not about some romance or some right. back room at a bar or anything like that. Right. It's and I it's the first it's the first story I've ever read with a trans main character, and it's it, it's in a set in a very interesting place it's set first in greece but it also goes back to her right. bringing in lebanon and um to me it's like you're right the 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 the, the world has opened up in terms of the kind of yeah. stories we have to tell and and can now tell well and and even you i i mean we were talking right before we started recording um you're a novelist i've read the fourth career you, you that's a whole different the story um you know we can plug your own novel <laughs> <laughs> great yeah um you know but but again yeah i mean it's just that we it is exciting to see how we have been able to branch out and that people can you know i'm not going to be naive um but more and more people are identifying as i am a queer writer i am telling queer stories um you know in def somewhat in defiance of the whole kind of conventional wisdom telling them not to do that right no i agree and it's it's not just coming out stories right right um and yeah and it's like and i've always said there's always a place for a, a nice coming of age story a nice coming out story uh, but it's also nice that we're portraying life now after coming out. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, and I, you know, the different ways that we love and live and 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 in your screenplay sometimes just survive. Right. So, so Tim, as, as you kind of think about this, as as we um, come to a conclusion, what is it that you, uh, you know, you've been writing for for a long time. 
Um, you're telling different kinds of, of stories, bringing different kinds of worlds to all of us in, in, in novel form or screenplay form. You know, what would you say now to the, the kind of up and coming young writers that are trying to find their way into this art form? Well, first of all, I'd say to any writer, gay or not, that if you um, if you think you want to be a writer, you better think again first. <laughs> <laughs> and you still want to be a writer. It's a lot. It's a lot of work, uh, and so much more has fallen onto the writer's shoulders than than historically was true. I mean, you know, the people like Hemingway's and that they they wrote their thing off. They sent their manuscript off to the editor and the editor did all the marketing and all the editing and all right. the everything and all that comes right back to the uh, comes right back to the writer these days uh the technology allows us to sit at home and work at our computers and uh and you've got to be able to to really spend a lot of time once you've written something that's just the that's just the beginning of, of what your involvement is going to be but i'd say be just write what you know and, and 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 write it well i mean just um don't be afraid of being pigeonholed as a gay writer at this point uh in fact you're in a sense given where things are going somewhat politically and maybe more than somewhat that things are sort of reversing themselves uh in parts of the world like the united states in, in terms of gay rights uh it's more important than ever that we get out there and get a, as wide of an audience as we can um because we that's the only way we're going to be able to stay out of the closet. I think that's excellent advice and wise words for anybody and all of us. So Timothy J. Smith, screenplay is Istanbul Crossing. Um, and congratulations on, on winning our prize. And anybody out there, it's time now to galvanize because the next thing is we want to see this movie made and screening at Alan Film. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Tim. And thank you, everybody, for joining us here at Out on Film. We are very excited for this year's festival and hope that all of you will join us in theaters and streaming. Um, and have a great time and remain as ever defiantly queer. <laughs> thank you.